our journey. I wish that hands free was working. Psalm 25 verse 9. The language of faith. I don't like the sound I'm hearing from here. And so, do something. Did you pray before you came to church? Find a song that the Spirit is singing and then we'll groan. The meek will he guide in judgment. The meek will he guide in judgment. Another word there is understanding. Another word there is discernment. The meek and I said to Pastor Lamine this afternoon, I said there are two precursors as regards posturing to be able to qualify as the meek. One is that you must engage in self-evaluation. There is a possibility that you think you know. You can warm a car. It doesn't mean you can drive old road to a yacht. I can move it forward. I can reverse it. Does not mean you can manage an oncoming trailer. So your evaluation of yourself must be accurate. And there is no way to achieve accurate evaluation until you talk to he who is called the spirit of truth. Holy Ghost, show me me. That's the first thing you will do. The second thing is that when you receive your report sheet, even if you find out that you are more highly rated than the others, you will now need to embody humility. I know more than them, but I don't know enough. Because in that word called meek, you see an ingredient called humility. You see another ingredient called teachability. One that is open to be educated. Ah, you are still thinking. Ah, help me. God has a guiding reality. But that guiding reality can, will not be testified of by everyone. Those who will come into the experience of God's guiding reality are those that he has certified as being meek. And the meek will he teach his way. You can learn many things around God. But when it comes to the mastery of his ways... The way we apply for that school is that we, are, we come to the way of meekness. Why am I starting this way? It is because it is possible to use a concept or also possible to relate with somebody and not understand the concept or know the person. Now, because Pastor Dola is in front, you feature so much in my sermons. You know I like you, but it's the one directly here. Have you met somebody before? And after relating with that person for long, you now find, you now remember that you don't know his name. Now you are afraid to ask <laughs> the person's name because ah, the person will look at you and feel, so you don't know my name. You've done so much with the person. As it is with persons, it is, it is also with concepts that you can, you can say, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. And one day the young lady comes and says, what is love to you? And you find out that you have no definition. I know you have been praying all your life. May God teach you prayer. 
because you may find out that there is no understanding of that subject you came into the economy of God having faith but you may get stuck all of a sudden and if we admonish you to have faith in God you will say I've had faith faith doesn't work what else works and and we don't understand any other thing that works the question may be that you need faith redefined you need prayer defined you need power defined while we were in Ikorodu during the crusade when my sons were ministering I found out that they were even though their words were flowing but I know I knew when they started the meeting that the spiritual atmosphere was jammed and I hope they are listening so when I came I decided to because Prince was telling me that ah, Papa how did you go from that way and then you enter as you say you don't like crus you don't do crusades a lot how did you because I started by soul winning and what I was using soul winning to do was to back test power because the greatest function of spiritual power is to save souls I knew we had a power allocation for that meeting but we're not supposed to start with impartations because my son attempted impartations and the network jumped So I came with an evangelistic gospel. And souls were one. Okay, if he can win souls, then he can do other things. So I now went into my normal sermon and we now did impartations. And I told them, see, me, I need to go and rest between the other things. And then they became very fluid. And I hope they noticed that after my session, they became very fluid. During my session, I saw smoke. Pastor Diola, very thick smoke. That they were burning tires started pouring into all of us saw it so it was not spiritual smoke who, who, who. i now thought that generator was on fire but i saw that the, you know if your generator is on fire there'll be life fluctuations stay with me no life fluctuations what's happening here so i now saw pastor philip get up with some protocol guys and we had military security they now went to the other side of the road. They now found out that some people had marked our crusade and they were burning incense. Bolu, they were burning incense on the other side of the road and smoke filled the field. So when they now challenged them, they now took off. They now ran away. You may think you know power, but you may not know. So when I woke up in the meeting and I asked my son, did you sleep well? He said he slept well. I said every time me I slept, I fought. If I closed my eyes, I fought. In that fight, I was able to find out the, a good number of the territories and the hubs. I mean the, the principalities and the hubs of those principalities in that locality. Some of the things I told them, they didn't know existed. Was not, I'm not trying to advertise superiority but I'm just saying that they are knowings so Prince now said uh, so why did you not have those experiences I said there's something in our faith well I'll coin a word for it it's called threat level somebody can come here and say since I've done been doing ministry no boomer, so I've never had a nightmare before, and that person thinks it's a show of power. No, it's because your threat level has been checked, and they found out you won't affect the land. So we're not going to build warfare around you. All of our fathers, including Pat WF Kumi, <laughs> testify to attacks. So non-existent attacks is not proof of accurate covering. It may be proof that your threat level is low because even Jesus was attacked. So there was a church based assault. There was also a demonic one. But God used everything to teach us the new face of ministry in that territory. He may be doing ministry, but you may not know it yet. 
one of the things we must do abundantly in this season is to sit down with the Holy Ghost and say define things to me I have found that I don't know too much my labors around faith in this last few you know the topic is grow what we are still doing is growing in faith we have not looked at every other sectors and I had six topics I didn't even know that this growing in faith will hold me like this but the Lord invited me to come and learn faith again and he appointed my teachers and I have not drawn back from being schooled by them they speak I go into scriptures I check and I'm beginning to find meaning for many common verses that I used to think that I knew that those verses were was God demonstrating his glory hiding stuff in plain sight I can recite the verses but they had more definition is one of those high dimensions of knowledge that you can say this is what this thing is for me in my studies is second to experiences Jesus has taught his disciples so many things and then as he gravitates towards the end of his ministry he comes back to them and begins to ask a question who do men say that I am define me because the next phase is an experiential phase what you saw in the Acts of the Apostles was a demonstration of the twofold revelation that Jesus that God gave to Peter thou art the Christos you are the hope of the anointing and you are the son of the living God you bear the DNA of he that quickens that's all that we saw in the Acts of the Apostles So I said to humble myself and tell the Lord that I accept that I don't know. I don't know many things. Jesus' encouragement was to, ask, was to receive the kingdom like a, like a child. A child is ever inquisitive. He wants to know. The fact that he did something well does not mean that he feels that he has attained it because he knows that there's the possibility of an accidental happening. I want to master it, so I'm going to ask questions. Daddy, when I put this thing here, this is what came out. If I put it here, will it still come out? You say yes. So if I put it here, why does it come out? And if it comes out, my son now goes to the product and you're almost worn out. This thing, what will it do? Huh? And we have been warned never to shut him down. God is so willing to be expressive with knowledge, but you must be willing to say, I know I use it, but I don't know it. So when God began to speak to me on the subject, you have not found my, my place. On the subject of um, the language of the spirit, I dis of, of faith rather, I decided to go as slow as possible. My delivery is going to be very, very slow. Anywhere I stop, I stop. I'll be around next week Sunday, so I'll teach again. The labor of the spirit is to produce mastery. It's not just to produce knowledge. On the way to mastery, we start with knowledge. And then from knowledge, we migrate into what we call understanding. That's the part of mastery. Knowledge, understanding, then sustained practice. And then we ultimately produce what you call mastery. Knowledge, it gives you an idea that there's a possibility. Understanding, it brings to you a picture of the dynamics. How does it work? And then because you now know how it works, you now begin to walk it, to walk it, to walk it. In walking it, you find out that some things that you felt you had handled in understanding were not accurately handled. 
So you go back, you make adjustments until that activity becomes something that you can do closing your eyes. Have, have you seen Asians in those their movies master swordsmanship before? They learn first the sword. The movement of the blade through the wind. How to cut. How to defend. They start with sticks. Then they begin to use real swords. And then they now begin to learn how to fight in case they are incapacitated. So he has obstacles that is going to cut through. Or he has a sparing partner. Somebody is fighting with and his own eyes are tied. He's supposed to dodge the sword, mastering the movements of a sword through the wind. That is something passes here. It displaces air. So he needs to listen for the sound of the wind. You don't know that sound. But your ears can pick it. Straining. Repeated work, repeated work, repeated work. So you find out that in the movies, when something bad happens to them in a fight, it's like they pause the movie, they now do what you call a flashback. The flashback is to remember learning under stress and how they prevailed, then they utilize that new knowledge and they prevail. So that's what the Lord wants us to do. So pardon me if I get a little bit petty, but the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12 to 14, just to establish that truth and then we can journey. We worship you. We hail you. Most high. Ah, oh, Jesus, help me. Can I have bolder prints? Ah, oh, help me. Land it, please. Okay. Okay. For when the time. For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and that become such as have need of milk and not of strong milk. There is an expectation, the writer of Hebrews is saying, that right now you are supposed to have gained mastery. And when you gain mastery, you are now sent back to go and tutor other people onto mastery. What we discovered is that you still need a teacher. Your cycle of learning has not been perfected. Your allocation was in the realms of strong meat but you are still addicted to milk as regards the oracles the doctrines of God next verse I need it on this screen for everyone that useth milk now the Bible is not saying we should take we should leave off milk foundational doctrines is saying that we should not be fixated there. Learn it. Embody it. And with what you have learned, journey into greater things. But it is possible to stay there, to be a king over what is basic. So he's saying that everyone who lives like that, who uses it, that sustains the use of just milk alone, is unskillful. Have you played a video game before? Or on your phone? At the basic level, you can win. When you, when you have gone past level one, you now come into what you call levels of difficulty. That's when skill is required. You can beat all your, your foes in level one. If you stay at that ground level, the Bible says that you are unskillful in the word of righteousness for that person is a babe. 
Verse 14 is what I need. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Those who are perfected. Those who are matured. Those who are complete. Even those who, can we read together, by reason of you sustained practice have their senses exercised. That's the story that took me to Ikorodu. That there's a way you can operate by knowings. And it's not because you were instantaneously imparted. It's that you have used your senses repeatedly that way. And then by constant use, the Holy Ghost has aided you into a realm of mastery. By reason of use, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. This is the level of mastery that God is taking us to. I know that the last day church, like we are, we need to battle not just with the forces of darkness that come by brute forces, the last day battle is going to be a wisdom battle. And wisdom will take us into the faculty of discernment. Because the way man fell is the same tool that Satan will use. He came by logic. Somebody say logic. Did God say that you should not eat? And one of the ways to discern the logic of Satan is that the end is to incriminate God. Is to achieve a negative reputation for God. Did God say you should not enjoy your life? Uh, where's Lamde? Like we, let me not go into the meeting, but like we saw some videos this afternoon. While all of you were begging God or begging online that, uh, is it God, God, what's the name of that dance? You should not enter church. Some, some, some supposed ministers of the gospel, some ministers have incorporated that dance into their worship. The trend is fresh. I don't think the trend is up to three weeks. But they have incorporated it. They have found sounds for it. The one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is now a way to count the blessings of God. Yes. So there are two ways to manage the blessings of God. You count them and you recount them. So recounting is backward counting. Students in Babylon. Anything that comes must enter church. And we are not afraid to collide. It was difficult before to know who a follower of Christ is. He is here now. I was shocked that was because I saw yesterday people were begging that tomorrow is Sunday. Oh, don't bring this thing to church. Oh, they have perfected it. They even took themselves two by two. So that after they dance, somebody could chase the other one. On exalted altars. We are not ready for a fight. It's just as those things tell us that our redemption is nigh. Because there's an abomination that causes desolation that has crept into the holy place. I told my son this afternoon, I said, Lam Day, we don't know what praise and worship is again. We started by not knowing it in the spirit. Now we don't know it in the flesh. So when you listen to the lyrics of the song, you know that nothing outside the man who is singing gets glory for this thing. But it's praise and worship. So we need to ask, who is the new God? Man. And many times it is the man. He worships and praises to enjoy himself, not to please God. You know, it's a long time I've done this thing. I might like minding my business. But what the enemy does is that he causes those who are allegiant to God to migrate from the divine extremes because following Jesus is extreme living. It's not balanced living. 
Are you with me? It's extreme. It's not what I mean by not balanced living. Is I'm using the concept of um, physics where you have a pendulum. Living in the middle is not following Jesus. It comes with denial of self. It comes with the bearing of a cross. That's not median existence. You cannot slightly look like the world and be a follower of Christ. For if I be a pleaser of men, then I am not a servant of Jesus. So people on the streets chased themselves, danced. And they now came to meet Yahweh in church. A what to be street were bound. The unfortunate thing is that there are people who plead the cause of those strangeness from the pulpit. And they say, no, there are different styles of things. Our faith in many places is fast losing its purity. And people who worship lesser spirits are purer in their worship than us. It's true. You cannot see them in a Shango shrine do that, you know. And Shango is not as severe as Yahweh. No. It is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. Even if Shango falls there, he will not survive. But those who worship strange gods, lesser gods, are more hallowed. Even our cousins have still not embraced worldliness like the church of Jesus Christ. And we are not afraid to make isolated cries. If our fathers follow this path, then the faith will have been obliterated in our nation. We are here because some men stood straight for the faith and we cannot arrive here and handle chaff to the next generation. A God that lives to see you please yourself. The problem is simple. There's a mastery problem. People have a knowledge of God but they don't understand him. And if you don't understand God, there are inferences that you cannot draw. Electricity can help. And if you think the only thing you know about electricity is to be able to charge a phone, you don't understand electricity. So you will not respect it. When you have been shocked once, there is a new level of respect you have with electricity. And you now know that if a wire is plugged on the other side, if you want to peel it, you don't use your teeth. That's understanding. So if somebody says there's no plier, use your teeth. You will speak from the consciousness of an outcome. There's a name they call that stick in Yoruba. It starts with an A. What do you call it? Apola. That's what understanding does. It produces reverence. That's why the Bible says that the reverence of God, the fear of God, is, is level, is 100 level in the school of wisdom. There's, there's, there's an accuracy that your life begins to demonstrate when you understand God and you fear Him. Largely, we are not demonstrating mastery of the Spirit. The ability to discern between what is good and evil is given to what I'm feeding you is strong meat. I know that it's possible that I get some backlash, but oh. what is bad is bad. Bringing worldly trends into church is bad. It doesn't have two names, it was punishable under the law. It is more punishable under grace. Because people under the law struggled not to be worldly. The man in grace has been helped not to be worldly. 
seeing that we have a, received a kingdom which cannot be shaken let us have grace that grace is available supernatural ability that we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear and he tells us why that our God is a consuming fire in case you think the gospel of grace ends with pleasure the Bible says that at the end of grace is a fire is a flame he still burns and he will burn so can I can I borrow you some wisdom don't don't be lost in the trends don't 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 you are called to live differently don't don't I know it's on TikTok. Maybe you want to earn, do they earn money on TikTok too? I know you want to earn money, but don't do it. Many of these things are systems of enslavement. It's, it's, it's all about control. That's what the challenges are about. They are about control. The ability to make you do what you will not naturally do because everybody is doing it. You need to backtest resistance. That I know everybody is doing it, but I, be, I will not do it because I'm not inspired to do it. That's where Christian is. With flattery, sweet words. It's harmless. It's just a challenge. He will corrupt as many as have done wickedly against the covenant, but they that know their God, they shall be strong. And I've told you, exploits is not miracles in that verse. The Bible says they shall be strong and they shall resist. So resistance is exploits in these days. That everybody's doing it. But the trend passed and I didn't do it. That's what the knowledge of God produces. Somebody who is so addicted to his maker that he has no time to yield to the flesh. So instrumentalist. If you have learned the sound, if you play here, you have played the last day. Worst case scenario will look for will look for you know this sound can be produced from a, a laptop. This ministry has no space for worldliness. No space. No space. If it is not inspired by the Holy Spirit, it must not happen. Whether I'm in town or not in town, and I trust God for our pastors, they know how I can put fire on somebody's tail. Whether I'm in town or not, scripture Paul was telling the church in Philippi in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Put it up. He was encouraging them to obedience. And he was saying that they had obeyed when he was there, but they should much more. Because I know the journeys are here. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my present only, but now, much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with reverence and trembling. There is something that God has walked into you, but you must produce fruits of that internal walking. Are you with me? Ah, take Corinth to our garden. We have not finished our songs. Huh? Help me, help me. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Bless me now, my Savior. I go to. All right. So back to definitions. What is a language? What is a language? I have an idea, but I decided to go into the dictionary, and um, the dictionary gave a lot of help. A lot of help. The dictionary says that language is a principal mode of human communication. Stay with my definitions. 
a principal mode of human communication consisting of words used in a structured and conventional way and conveyed by speech, writing, or gesture. It is a principal mode. I'm going to take out, out the word human because we're speaking faith. So that's spiritual. It's a principal mode of communication and it consists of words. The base of language is words. But they are used in a structured and conventional way. Very common way. But they are deployed by speech by writing and by gestures. So if I look at you, what's your name, sir? Right. And I do like this. What did I say to you? Come. I did not say come, but you can even use the base is words because all of us know the words. The gesture, this is what you saw, but this is not what you heard. So that's Habakkuk that I will see what he will say. Are you with me? So even the sites at their base have words. But the speaker and the hearer are supposed to understand how those things function because it's structured and it is conventional. Let me use the second one. A language is a system of communication used by a particular country or community and that's it's from that second one I'm going to start a language is a system of communication many things put together that's what the system means many organs put together but the end is communication and it is used by particular countries and communities. So when I say the language of faith, one, what I am attempting to introduce by the help of the Spirit is not something that the world can understand. The reason is because this system of communication is not for everybody. It functions within the context of our heavenly nationhood. So if you are not saved, the language is not designed to be understood. Reason why when you want to take a faith action, your unsaved friends cannot understand your action. Are you with me? Because it is not structured and made conventional for them. In their world, they don't understand what this means. I have quite a lot of friends, brethren, who are deaf. So when I met them, they said, your name is Tolu. We need to give you a definition. I can't even remember. Now. I know it had to do with my, my, my hand in the middle of my fingers. I think it's a T. And then, no, the T was my hand raised and then maybe on my chest or something, and then another movement. After a while, they now call me back that, that your T is a violent T. I said, what does it mean? It means like T the fighter, T the warrior. And that if people don't know your warrior context, they might begin to feel, ah, this guy is a violent person. So they now gave me T, like T the lover. It was still the T, but it was at another part of the body. When they do their signs, you would think that they are a confused lot. But you see, within the community of the deaf, there is understanding. Because those signs are a language. And maybe I should warn you, I found out laboring with scriptures that the language of faith is the language of God. That is what God speaks to his children. So it's not just a community. Well, God is part of our community in the larger sense of it. Are you with me? 
it's a it's the language of the kingdom so when the bible says the just shall live by faith it's not just the activity of faith but captured within the living by faith is that they will also communicate by faith and that's something big that i want you to go with if two of us meet ourselves and we talk the physical language may be english the proof, Pastor Jola, that we communicated is that faith rose in both of us. I'm saying, John, if I meet you on the road, no matter how distraught or confused you are, if we spoke, there should be an impartation of faith as a result that we spoke because in our community, we have not communed if faith has not been established. The average person may look down on this subject and say, so what, what does language really have to do with faith? Maybe I should proceed this way to tell you that everything that was created was created not just by the voice of God, but by the language of God. Everything that was created was created not just by the voice of God, but by the language of God. What do I mean? The Bible is filled with the speakings of God. It is not every time God spoke, or you me, that something was created. So the voice of God is not always creative. It can be instructional. It can be directional. It can bring rebuke. Are you with me? It can commend. It does not always happen that way. So it was not just the voice being deployed in Genesis. It was actually a particular kind of language that produced the things that we see. I know you don't believe me. Abi. But you believe that it's not every time God spoke his scriptures that you saw it succeeded with it was so and something appeared. Abi, get thee out of thy country, out of thy father's house, and out of thy kindred, then thy father's house, into a land that I will show you. Was anything created? Because that voice brought instruction. This language of faith that we're trying to look into is what sustained creation but before we go into faith let's first look at the concept of the divine language so let's use two verses of scripture Hebrews 11 3 or maybe we start from one now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen next verse for by it the elders obtained a good report the third verse is my key verse here for true faith it means by the activity of faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God and the word word here is not logos so the writer of Hebrews is saying God did not frame the words by an original concept. The word here in the lexicon is rema. And one of the meanings of that word rema is a language. A means by which words are uttered. So if you wanted to call my name Tolu in your mind, you will need a language to utter that concept. Are you with me? That's what we call rema. A language that vocalizes a concept. So there was a language that God was using 
to frame the world so that things which are not seen were not made of things which do appear. It means, John, if you also want to frame your world, the key to framing your world is arriving at God's rema. I don't like using Greek words. But it's, if, it's, if God used a language to frame the words, and in that framing, he did not need a tangible... When the Bible says, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear, it's not saying that there was no raw material for the creation of the world. It's just saying that the products are tangible, but the, the raw materials are intangible. Are you with me? The product is tangible. So John, you have plans to marry? One day now, when you wear suit, what color wedding suit do you want to wear? White. And white shoe. And white tie. And the wife will now wear white too. Have you, maybe you should take counsel with Pastor Timothy. You know why? When they snap the picture, we, we might have some issues because it's all white. Black during your wedding doesn't make you the devil. I hope you know. Okay. John said white, and I perceive that you may have pictured it in your heart. You have closed your eyes, you have seen yourself, you have imagined the person. The day you marry, the only thing that will make us come is that you are marrying a human being, a tangible person. But how you arrive at that lady must not be physical things. There is a language that produces a wife. Are you with me? That's how you frame a wife. And then intangible things are established as a woman. That's how ministries are built. That's how businesses are built. It all starts with talk. Concepts in your heart that are now released. And I'm not doing anything metaphysical. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm using scriptures. That's how it begins. If you do it any other way, it means your product will not carry the traits of God. Because the way to get divine results is to use a God process. Are you with me? So God was busy speaking his language. And the things that appeared began to come out of things that do not appear. So we've established that there was a language that God used. When we journey, we'll tie that language into its source so that you know how to speak it. But let's go gradually. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. Maybe we'll start from 1. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets had in this last day spoken unto us by his son whom he had appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the world. Who being the brightness of his glory. What does that mean? Other people came advertising God. But the most dominant advertisement of what God looks like is his son. So he said, if you have seen me, you have seen the father. And the express image of his person. And upholding all things by the word of his power. So things were, the words were framed by the language of God. Now he's upholding all things by the, the word here is also rema. By the rema of his power. So what is the rema of God's power? And I've been stuck here for a couple of years. How many of you know that scriptures are powerful? Why is scripture powerful, Bolu? 
The scriptures are powerful because the word of God is powerful. So we can say that there's power in the word of God. Abby, how many of you don't believe that? Okay, we'll just look for somebody to disciple you for, for a few hours and you come back. The word of God is powerful, but what upholds the world is not the Bible. The Bible said the word of his power. The word there is rhema, the word there is language. God has a language with which he exercises dominion. In utilizing that language, the Bible gives us certain places. So the Bible is the word of God, but not everything written in the word of God is the word of his power. Because it is not every verse of scripture that God uses to win. You are confused. Ah! Holy Ghost, help me. Okay. What's your name again, my dear? Temlolua. Ah, why did I forget your name? Okay. So, Temlolua, they, I come into your house and the first thing I say is I'm hungry. So you begin to move around the house. You begin to move around the house. Everything you are doing is called motion. Right? But not every movement that you made puts food on the table. So if your phone rings in the room and you went to the room to pick your phone, it's still a movement made by you. But that movement is not putting food on the table. The things you do around pots and water and rice, what you have in your hand is the word of God. But within the word of God, there are many kinds of word from God. Scripture has multiple errands. There are utterances that occasion life, the word of life. There are utterances of God in his word that occasion faith, the word of faith. There are utterances in the word of God that administer grace. They are called the words of grace. There are utterances in scriptures that birth righteousness. They are called the word of righteousness. The word of his power is the utterances with which God dominated. This world will have gone the way of the garden, infiltrated, scattered. What creates the balance is that God has regulated darkness by dominion. That's what is called the word of his power. There are utterances that he has said. One of the things I think Satan will have adjusted the seasons. Because if you can manipulate time, you can manipulate people. But as long as the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, these times shall not cease. Those utterances are regulatory utterances. You can't undo them. Your labors, when you collide with them, you stop. That's what you call the word of God's power. That's how it demonstrates dominion. That is what upholds the world. Remember, he creates by language. He also upholds by language. If the believer labors into the language by which God created, you become a creator. Your life can be framed. Ah. We are not all used to people who talk well. When I get there, you understand. We are not all used to people who talk well. Pastor Diola, let me give you an example. My son prays. I can't remember the beginning of his prayer, but that's how they pray in school. They're teaching every friend here. Um, okay, I remember now. Guide us. Keep us. Don't let us die. Who prays like that? Should it not be let us live? Why do you put death in our prayer? Don't let us be sick. Really? 
grant us health. Where did he go to? Remember I said on Tuesday, that thing is prayer, but it operates in the consciousness of the knowledge of good and evil. It is prayer, but it's, it's, it, they are the utterances of a fallen man. And when God hears it, if you hear well, his response is, who told you that dying was captured in your reality? You are redeemed. Who told you that part of the package is sick as, as though God has sickness and has health and you are saying, okay, don't give us that option. Give us this one. I know you want to judge the small boy. Some of you are adults. But when you read all night and you are going to the exam, your prayer is, Lord, don't let me fail. You want to do a business, step. it's the consciousness of loss. Ha! Oh, Lord. Have you prayed that? Are, are you with me? You have found prayer, but you have not found this language. The King James says, let there be light. Some other translations say that that statement recorded as let there be light was too long. That was just two words. That all God said was light be. We were raised negative. But God does not talk to his children like that. And when we want to get the results of God, we must make up our mind to speak the language of God. Because on, in the first portion we read, God uses his language to frame words. You can create defense systems around you, supply systems around you, health systems, sustenance systems, anointing enhancing systems by the language of God. You can regulate what happens in the family by the language of God. And his language is the language of faith. He call it those things that be not as though they were. I know sickness is in the body, but we are not going to mention it because we know that he has dealt with it. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. And the sin storms may persist. It's, it, it, you see, it's not that the prayer is not working. It's that the symptoms are in a realm. They, can't, they are not catching up too early. Faith brings you into God's activity realm. The world is not in God's activity realm. So there's a gap. That, oh, Jesus, are you with me? In trying to regulate speed, what is the, the base in speed of objects? What's the reference point? There's a particular quantity, physical quantity that is the reference point in, um, in speed. What is that? Light. Abi, am I wrong? The speed of light is, is the fastest in our realm, right? So, the word of God is what? It's a lamp unto your feet. It's a light unto your path. It means that the testimony of the word is ahead of experiences. Oh, it's like I'm in another church. The testimony of the word is ahead of experiences. They don't have, they have never arrived together. Look at the number of years the prophets were speaking about the Messiah. Look at when the Messiah came. Because between the occasion or the, the event of the word as light and the event of the fulfillment, there is what you call the fullness of time. There is a circle that is born. It's faster for some things. It's slower for some things. That's why we keep saying it. Because one bad one. My 
head is at rest. But the experience is headache. My head is at rest. My head is at rest. At least I know where the issue is. So I'm, I'm going to bring the word of God into the head. Pastor Diola, I have seen people ex exit terminal diseases speaking the language of God. Health in my body. They go to the hospital. Says cancer. Health in my body. That's not a direct statement from God. Because the, the language of God is exactly what God has said. And inspired words from what he has said. So if I say health in my body for long. And the doctors are saying no. That you see you have to put your house in order. Then I would go back to the word. And say that with long life. He has satisfied me. And he has shown me his salvation. His salvation is not an event. He's a person. He's a person. That's what Simeon said. Now you can allow your servant to go in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation. That's how your life is designed to be framed. Because that is how this world was framed. And in, because your life is domiciled, rested in this world, the world that God created understands God's language. The world does not have amnesia. It understands that that was how it was framed. I said, Your Lord, can I say this to you? There are people who don't know what we know as believers. We don't know too much. But because they have stuck to these basics, and what I'm teaching is basic Christianity. The language of God is embedded in a foundational teaching called faith towards God. Because they know these things. They don't pray as much as we do. They don't fast as much as we do. Some of them are not even too committed. And I'm telling you, Satan is not the one prospering them. Are you with me? They have found a means to interact with this world by the same language that God used to frame it. Knowing that it is that same language that upholds it. It is possible to be doing business at the 10th floor. Forgetting that there was a way you climbed. Many of us got high and put away foundational teachings thinking that they were childish things. Some people have stayed with childish things and they have continued to assess God in as children. We will gain, we will have rancor. Are you with me? We will command territories. But when the territories are commanded, they will have more to show for it because the things they have to show for it are not things that we were not designed to have. Their testimonies are supposed to be our testimonies and so much more. So I, somebody starts church today and he says, um, our first class is priesthood. And I'm like, are you fine? Start from the ground. There were things that God used to bait us into priesthood. Are you with me? And those principles that we learned are still the principles that God engages in processes to encourage us when we are overwhelmed. So there are scars that I have in my priesthood. Things have happened to me because I took a stand for Jesus against dark spirits. For example, I can be sick. There was a time I was praying, praying, praying. And then a wind, a natural window, boom. And I became feverish instantly. My lips began to shiver. Meanwhile, I had a conference. I remember I was preaching for Apostle Wally. I was still in battle at that time. So I called him. I know there's a way Apostle Wale processes all those things. He doesn't process, he doesn't believe that because you are sick <laughs> that your body should stop. You say, My brother, you have your body in subjection. It means what ultimately becomes of your body is a product of you. I remember one of the things he said that time that even in redemption, he didn't take it from you, you gave it to him. Blew away my theology that God who created it did not forcefully take me from me. 
He gave it to me. Paul even came back after the first giving to encourage that. Offer your bodies. Because he does not forcefully take it. So if the sovereign God does not forcefully take it, I will now give it to sickness. Are you with me? So sickness comes and wrestles, the bo- wrestles from you a body that God did not wrestle away from you. Are you with me? His language was designed to frame your body. I know the ancestral things that happened. But one of the things about redemption is that redemption is another opportunity to start again. So we'll begin recreating the body. The antecedents were created. Somebody went to an altar and said, nobody in this family must serve any other God apart from Ifa. Now you're around. You're Falai. Even though you're James Falai. If I does not forget, he does not have amnesia. Spirits don't. But you can, you can recapture your bodies from Ifa. And the language is the language of faith. The language of God. If you are challenged at the use of that language, your annunciation is that in the beginning, it began by this language. So you are reframing your world. Maybe that's the testimony. Don't even look for an A. We, we don't fail. We are E students. I am not one of you. I may have been born that way, but because that language facility is still around, there is still the possibility of framing. Maybe we should go home. I heard that um, if you do ministry in Obama, show your disadvantage. That people in Lagos are better than you because there's a lot of money in Lagos and money is scarce here. Is it true or a lie? Be sincere. Is it true? Is it true? Yes. It's true. But all truths are dimensional. All truths are dimensional. If you jump up, you will come down. It's not true in every realm. When you get to the moon, a new law is kickstarted. No. He shall be like a tree planted by the waters. It's not beside, or it's not by Oba. No. I said, Allah, if I knew the things that I've known the last two weeks, I would not be like this. I have regrets. I have regrets that I read scriptures with a lens. With a lens, with a kind of lens that this was a scripture, this is what it means. He has given beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be trees of righteousness, the ones that the Lord planted so that he might be glorified. How does God get glory from a geographical advantage? That I'll be able to say permanently that because you put me in Obomosho, that's why I was hindered. How does God get glory from that? I am where God wants me to be. And this location is my home zone. My advantage is here. Every land has wealth. And it will give it up in time. But I will keep speaking to it. We have sweated on this land. We will reap harvests in the spirit. We will reap harvests physically. The land will be subdued by the word of his power. 
We will set boundaries of existence for the land. That's what God did. In a nutshell, I'm saying creation and maintenance was by the language of God. When he gifted us that language, his language became the language of faith. And so like I did last week, I'm encouraging you to go into scriptures. If you don't read the Bible, you are cheating yourself. And one read is not good enough. Because sometimes the light doesn't come first reading. Even the verses you have preached from, please go back and read them. You are still confused. Raise up your hand. I have time. The agenda is that we all journey together. A day of framing has come. One in which you can no longer say, oh, maybe I was born in Okyogun. Because in Oyo State, that looks like, Abi, you are not in Oyo, you are not in um, Ibadan, you are not in Obomosho. So if you, are in, if you are far in Okyogun, you will say, ah, I grew up in Okyogun. There's no disadvantage where God is. Are you with me? This, I'm saying that our world understands his language. It will respond in Spain. It will respond in Portugal. It will respond in Obomosho. It will respond in Igbo. That's why it responded in Boko. That's why it responded in Ota. You think Ota is Lagos? I know some people live in Ota and they say that they are living in Lagos. No, you think Ota is Lagos? You, all this express that is now lit with camps, you think that that was how the express was? It was, it, there were dens of robbers, dens of thieves. But some men found their home zone in God. And they began to release the language of God. Year in, year out. People called them fools. But everybody who mocked them has gone to take a back seat. And those who are currently mocking will take a back seat. It's, it has been determined by God. You will find what is written concerning you in the word. And you will take an oath that even if you don't know how to say it well, you would rather be silent than to undo what God wants to create in partnership with you. Every time I look at you, I tell you that your feet are outside the nation. Every time I look at you, that your location within these boundaries called Nigeria is not large. And I will keep saying it, no matter how long it takes, I have the visions in my heart. And you are not going to run away because life is hard. You will go because you have become needed. All of us cannot be here. An apostolic center does not celebrate in the strength of membership. It celebrates in the ability to send men. And I'm going to keep saying it. And I'm going to keep saying it. And I'm going to keep saying it. Because we'll be having reunions in the years to come. And according to scriptures, I will lift up my eyes and see everybody coming from everywhere. And I'll be asking myself, how did I give back to this kind of children? They won't be ruffians. They will be lords. They will be gods in the realms that God has placed them. That's what I'm sitting on. I know. I know that we'll do bigger things. And when we begin to do bigger things, we'll not need to write on Facebook. Because God will have raised men and women. Small beginnings mean nothing. I've seen it in scriptures that even if your beginning is small, your latter end shall greatly increase. That's what the Bible says. And that's what I say in prayer. Have you even stopped talking about your small beginnings? My eyes is fixated on the end. I know you don't have plans to get married, but I've seen you get married. Yes. You think that you are isolated. Oh, is this how I will end? My own scripture says that it is God. It is God. That's why you must stop manipulating. 
Because it is God who sets the lonely in families. So your loneliness will give birth to a company. What God wanted to see was what he was saying. That's how his language operates. He was not speaking. You know, I repented, Pastor Diola. The average young minister has spoken more about what is bad in the church than what God will do in the church. What they are luring us to do is to take our eyes from the bad things that are happening to talk about the good things that are happening. That's still cheap. Can you see what the church in our nation will become? Can you see it? If you can't see it, stand on your watch. Look for the things that God said about the church in Nigeria and begin to speak them forth. We are not going to have a church of few strong men. It's going to be a nation of a strong church. I mean, companies, many strong men. The church in Nigeria is going to teach the church global righteousness, resilience. The purity of the gospel is going to come out of here. Fake does not define our future. That's why God is doing a lot of exposures. There will be repentances and there will be castings away. But I came to announce to you that what is ahead of us is good. And we must start talking about it. It must become an obsession. When we come into marriages, we, must, we will have misunderstandings. But what we must begin to say is the things that we want to see. I know we just had a misunderstanding. But I'm not going to say, you know, I knew that. No, no, no. There's understanding in this home. We have wisdom to live together. When our second, daughter, uh, second child, the daughter came, I said to my wife, I said, now we need to ask God for wisdom. She said, for what? I said, we have wisdom to raise one. But we need wisdom to raise two. One, this new baby is uniquely different from the first one. The mandate is to train up a child, not your children, in the way that he should go. So, foundations Christ both ways, but there is a download that tells, that differentiates the two children. And each of them must be placed on their exact pathways. Not, not raising anyone like the other one. You know, in many families, people were raised together. So when we bought shoe for your brother, he spoiled it. So you, you will not have shoe. Your brother went to play football. football. Unfortunately, you know to pass my head. One fear can talk. Every child's cause in God is determined by God, and a parent must find and stick to that cause. There are people who manage one well. When they had two, they started neglecting one. So I said, we need wisdom. And in my prayers, I stopped asking. I now receive. For whatsoever you ask when you pray, believe that you have received it and you shall have them. The proof that you have received is that the language in prayer changes to a language of possession and not a request. I have wisdom. I can raise two children. I have wisdom. I have wisdom. Sometimes I still act in folio, but I have wisdom. Because my life will catch up with my utterances. Somebody is saying, so how do we learn the wisdom? And I'm sure it was a question in Pastor Lamide's heart when he was with me this afternoon. How do we learn it? How do we learn it? A few verses of scripture on the way to on the way to how to learn it. Just to press in a few more things. Colossians 4, 5 to 6 gives us some wisdom. 4, 5 to 6. This is coming because your interactions will be more, will go beyond those in your community. If you go to China, for example, I know you speak Yoruba. If the only language you know is Yoruba, in China you'll be stranded. Are you with me? 
If you meet another Yoruba man, okay, we, I'll give an example. When we got to Ghana last year, our host brought us food and was good food, raw food, cooked food. I think they brought us, my wife is not here, they, brought, they, they gave us rice. We were in the service department, so they gave us rice. They brought their stew. I think their pepper and tomato are slightly different from our own. But the rice is very different. So we decided to prepare their rice. They will prepare our rice. And Jesus, Jesus, our rice, it was like a swamp. May God give you understanding. I'm all right, say now, I'm all right, say now. But the rice is different, so we managed to eat. The following morning, my wife looked in my face like, what are we going to be eating here? Meanwhile, we also needed to exchange our currency. The only common language I knew was English. But you see, that language can make me interact. But the result, which is to put food on our table, cannot. Because if I walk into a canteen and say, I want rice, they are going to give me their rice. They are going to give me their stew. I think they don't take too much salt there. So you'll be wondering if there's salt in the food or not. And it's good food. Meanwhile, it's good food. It's good food, but that's how they interpret food. So it's good food. But for me, I'm wondering, Lord Jesus, are we going to eat this thing for the number of days? So I woke up the following day and we had some bit of UST. And so I walked out of the house. And my wife said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to the beauty change. We need to change this money to see this. Do you know one? I will know. Are you sure you know your way? Because we don't, our host just left us and went away. They wanted us to have family time. When I stepped out, the Lord said, go straight. So I went straight. Turn left. Turn right. Go straight. Keep going. Stop at the MTN kiosk. So I got to the MTN kiosk and I said, good morning, ma. How are you doing? What do you want? So what I want is, I need to exchange this thing. She said, go down the road. Very far. I remember the place, Kotobabi. That's the name of the junction. Turn right and then you see a filling station. Inside the filling station, there's a period of change. Very nice place. So I said, yes. And I asked her, is it far? She said, it's a little bit far. Just stop a cab and go. I didn't have CDs. There will, could have been many I will have met on the road. But remember, I told her, I will get this done. After a few minutes down the road, the woman now came running after me and said, do you have money to give the cabman? I said, how much? Maybe he said three CDs or so. Or three CDs. There's a way they call it, three CDs, five. That's like half she gave me, she had in her hand the exact fare. So the person the Lord told me to ask was the person who was going to be willing to yield her money to a stranger for me to get there. So I did my exchange, I came back home. The next problem was food. So I asked the Lord again. And I told my wife, I'm going to get food. Why will you get it? I will get food. So I came out again. Turn right, and I turn right, turn left, turn left, greet the first man that is coming. So I greeted him. How are you doing, sir? He greeted me. So I was in greeting mood. And then I saw a lady who was sweeping the front of her shop, and I greeted her and said, Good morning, ma. And the response was, My brother. How am I your brother? Was what came to my heart. And I asked her, I said, You know me? I don't understand you. She said, your English is Nigerian. I am Nigerian. This restaurant, I cook Nigerian food. So we can say, um, what, what we want is um, Obono with, we had everything that we wanted to eat Nigerian. Somebody is saying it's happenstance. No. Words create. You need to, what I'm trying to teach now is to maintain your utterance even with people who don't speak your language. Because of the way the nation is, I told them in the house this morning, the nation, the state of the nation has colored our expectations. Tell me about a need to only see. K 
Quem a tua orelha não funha? E o pé? How many of you have said that recently? That if you need money to even get a helper now, it's going to be difficult. You just framed. The realm of the spirit does not understand those kind of things. The traditional worshippers used to call it Olu Kinika, Olu Bone. So when you go to the herbalist, he gives you one strange looking object and he says, Say your thing, discuss with the gods. This realm is a living realm. And what comes into it is by the gate called language. Language, language. We speak differently. The nation may be hard. I know it. But the earth was also without form and void. Even darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God did not say, oh, there's darkness. He understands that these words are the words by which he dominates. He doesn't negotiate by all chances. These words are not to describe the situation. I said to someone yesterday, I said, I told my wife, I was in the battle a few weeks ago, and I met a young man. I preached for his fellowship in Futa. So he saw me in church. Oh, that is an opportunity to rededicate to Jesus. And we prayed a few prayers. Your path is smooth. The jobs you want. So yesterday when I finished, it was late. And they said, somebody wants to drive you to Bomosho. I said, who? They said, somebody that knows you. So I mentioned the guy's name. They said, yes. Between that time and now, work is going well. He now has a car. Ah. Uh -uh. So I was now saying yesterday that. They said that the nation is hard. Faith does not say, does not operate um, in isolation. But you see, faith sustains the witness of God. So I said, I've been telling my wife, I still told my mom this afternoon, I've been telling my wife that you cannot suffer. You always be above. You know why? I was young and I am old and I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor is seed begging for bread. My confession is not because I have savings. But my dice is cast. If it remains one naira in this country, I will have it. I know you don't believe me, but that's how I live. We need to do that thing. We will do it. We will do it. In two days, the supply will come. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm not into begging people. If I ask money from you, it's because God told me to ask you. And it's not a common thing for me. Sometimes he says his provision will come from you. And I, would, I will unashamedly come to say, I need this thing. And I rarely get a close door. But it's not a lifeline that I use often. I'm more used to sudden appearances. Say, who is this person now? Say, let's go to Facebook. That's not his name there. Let's go to Telegram. It's not there. Oh, Lord, we thank you for this person that has given. Let him be blessed. But I'm not going to think tomato is scarce. I know the average person thinks that we have a lot of money as a family. And I'm exposing to you. We don't have money. <laughs> it, but he didn't promise that by the possession of money would we float. He's framing. 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 So they are about going on holidays. In prayers, I have received my son's school fees. I'm going to pay before he resumes. The money is not in my account, but it's there. I mean, in, if I'm talking to a non-believer, it's not there. But their school will not resume if I have not paid. That 
That's the truth. That's the truth. This is how we are called to live. We fall sick. We get tired. I see you use anti-malaria this week. But I'm not going to crouch because I'm using anti-malaria. I was preaching. I was taking the, the, my rest. So I wasn't taking counseling sessions when I traveled. I was sleeping well. I was drinking a lot of water because I know the potencies in water. Are you with me? Yes. I was not eating just anything. If you served me what I did not want to eat, I left your food. I was eating as healthy as possible because this body can heal itself and it heals itself by framing. You are healed. You are healed. Body, you are sound. I'm strong. I'm, I'm strong. I'm not even going to say I'm not weak because it means there's weakness in my head. The things God has called me to do, I have the strength for. If you say let's run to, to, to Ghana, I may not be able to run because Jesus did send me to do that one. Give me my verse of scripture. Let me read that and I'll read another one. Walk in wisdom towards them that are without. And what I'm saying is, one of the wisdoms that you must walk in because of the times is that there is a negative witness out there. You must be wise. Be like Elijah. I'm going to put my head between my knees, what does that do to your ears? It makes you deaf. So if I'm about to start a discussion, I just met you and said, John, how far now? And John says, Ha! You do that leisure. I'll walk away from you. Yes. Because when we meet together, there's what is supposed to happen to us. Philemon 1 6, and I'll come back here. My time is about up. Philemon 1 6. Philemon, Philemon, not Philippians. Philemon, Philemon. It's just a one chapter. I think it's one chapter. That the communication of thy faith. The word communication here is not speech, it is the word communion or the word fellowship. That the fellowship of your faith in one direction towards God, in, other, in the other direction towards men, may become effectual. Come, Pastor Diola. So, when we meet, our fellowship is of faith. And that fellowship is going to become productive by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. It means when we meet, we are not discussing the state of the nation. We are not senators. What defines our fellowship is common faith. What we are bearing witness to is what God said. Is what God said. Is what God said. And both of us are more faith-filled when we live. That's why we crave Christian fellowship. But that fellowship we had will produce more results. Because when we had the fellowship, what we were doing was that we are acknowledging, making mention, increasing our consciousness of the good things which are ours. Not only that, but which are in us. In Christ Jesus. That's the difference that happens when you are with a believer and when you are with a non-believer. If we understand how these things work, the only thing a believer owes a non-believer is the gospel of salvation. That's the only thing. Ah, let's go and watch ball together. It should only be an, that's the only thing God is saying to a non-believer. My son died for you. Come to Jesus. That's the only thing God is saying to a non-believer. I want to save you. So, if you are speaking the language of God, how faith is furnished in a non-believer is that he receives the invitations of God. That's what you should be saying. Are you with me? 
I know somebody is saying, but they are intelligent unbelievers. We need to talk about discernment today. Life in God is extreme. Are you with me? Pastor Dola, now churches invite non believers to come on a Sunday morning to teach them how to do business with what wisdom? The best, a non believer may be successful, but what you will be trying to introduce into Zion is Babylon. I know you say it's wise. No, by Jean. But the church is, exists in another dimension. It is infiltration. They are smart guys who don't know Jesus. But the wisdoms they bring cannot be from above. Our wisdom in the kingdom is a token of inheritance. It means it is powered by a father and son relationship. That's why we are saying to believers to rise. Because you have banks in the spirit. When you find your cause in God, what Jesus does is to unlock wisdom. How can we learn that way? And the Bible says, be not conformed to this world. But the world teaches us how to. Now what we see is that churches have been reduced in essence. They have left their high horses in the spirit and they have become regular corporations. So when we want to do strategy meeting, we bring somebody who is a master strategist in a secular realm. And he comes to give us wisdom in building a company that makes biscuit. We now apply it to make to grow something that is a spiritual organism. So the church will increase in numbers. The church will have a lot of people. But we cannot testify of growth spiritually. Unfortunately, our strength is in spiritual growth. The church must begin to raise our own wise men. That's why JD is in that conference. Are you with me? That's why JD is in that conference. Because JD is expected to be a kingdom wise man. He's supposed to have the Joseph anointing on him. If he's hearing me now, I'm trying to define what I've seen him look like in the spirit. He's supposed to have the Joseph anointing. He's supposed to not tell us what is best practices in the world, but tell us how, Zion, how the king of Zion wants us to run businesses. That's one of his areas of relevance to us. There are graces in you all. Not all of you will be pastors, apostles, or I don't even think this is a church of many apostles. You are supposed to gain mastery in the things that you, God has called you to. Having exercised the graces of the Holy Spirit inside you. So that in the day we want to learn about that thing. We are learning from believers. How many of you were a paradigm shift one? You see what we did? Pulled together our people and one after the other. They were bringing wisdoms through scriptures. That's what it's supposed to be. Work in wisdom towards them which are without redeeming the time. Next verse. Let your speech be always with grace. That's how we are designed to talk. I'm trying to define the speech now. I won't go beyond that. Let your speech be always with grace. The word grace here is not supernatural ability. The word grace here is not a merited favor. The word grace here is the divine influence upon the human mind. It means when you speak, that's another meaning for carries. If you check the lexicons, you see it there. It's a divine influence upon the mortal. The end of that influence is a steering towards God. So the Bible says that when you speak, Everything that you speak should be with grace and it should be seasoned with salt. Actually, the word season there is not just about um, spicing. 
is that it should be sustained, preserved, like salt brings preservation. It's your utterances are supposed to be such utterances that bring the divine influence that preserve from corruption. So that when I finish talking to you, there's a weight of God that now rests inside you. And it can be diverse things. It can be wisdom. It can be knowledge. It can be strength. It can be um, possessed passion. And that that thing, until it fulfills its errand, it stays. Because I'm not just speaking with grace. My utterances are also seasoned with salt that ye may know how to answer every man. Remember, the admonition starts with that you should be wise. Especially with those who are without. So, somebody can come and say, this test we're about to write. But we are low failing. When somebody talks like that, it's not with him. You are supposed to now communicate in a way to occasion the influence of God in that person's life and to keep that influence until the errand is done. So if I walk out of church there and somebody says I'm sick, in his name, you are made whole. If my utterances are seasoned with grace, those words will bring the divine influence upon that person and we sustain that word until the errand is fulfilled. That is why people call and say everything is scattering and we send a WhatsApp message because the language can also be put in writing and we say, peace be still. And your phone, MTN, will bear the divine influence and carry it to that person. And when that person receives it, it downloads the divine influence and it stays it until that person's problem is solved. So the language does not always employ so many words. It can be your year is blessed. Creative power. When I come next, I will show you how God gifts this thing because there are tools that he gives that quicken this thing. But this way I'm going to stop. Can we all decide that this week we'll speak right? Every time you speak negatively, see it like sin. Because when I come next, I would advertise to you the anti-facility that operates. There's what the Bible calls a lying tongue. I told Pastor Lamb this morning. A lying tongue is not only a tongue that says, Talo, where I stole and be, me call on loaded je. A lying tongue is also a tongue that speaks contrary to the witness of God. And according to scriptures, that lying tongue is an abomination to God. Your mouth was not given to discuss everything. It was given to echo what God has said. Even the Holy Spirit does not speak originally. Whatsoever he hears, that also shall he speak. It means your mouth was given so that you can function as an echo. If you don't know the testimony of God about a situation, then you have no license to speak. Some people's lives would have been better if they spoke less. My wife is not here. When we first married, the reason why we should have a lot of issues is that I'm a natural talker. She were not supposed to do this thing. I'm sorry. I understand that you're sorry, but this thing that you did, why you do it like this? It has four different implications. Implication one, implication two, implication three, implication four. And you see this fourth one, because of three reasons. One, two. and then sometimes my wife, her eyes will have become teary because she's wondering, really? And I didn't learn that time. In your bar, you come here and Allah So, you wake up in the morning, the young lady has managed to, to put her grief aside, say, Good morning. Say that thing that you did yesterday. 
I know she's laughing now because that's and I saw that it was not that we we're at each other's throat. Outwardly, we were at peace, but there was internal war. Because after two days, so my wife now took a posture. I've shared it before. Once I start like that, she stops talking. So our only communications during the day will be, good morning. Your food is ready. You want something? And then in the night, no matter the state that we are in, we must hold hands to pray. So we pray. So she will likely not pray during those times. She will just say an amen. And I can have 48 hours, 72 hours of silence. By 48 hours, I begin to feel like the devil. Hi, and I love this lady. But so I found out. Once he wants to go bad now, I just say, the Lord will send you help. And she say, eh. so sometimes she prints me. Say, eh. Hello, I know me, Lord. Amen. You can mature into it. I know you used to scream helpless because you are helpless. But you are not called to give voice to what life has produced. You are supposed to give voice to what God has intended. And in giving voice to what God has intended, you are supposed to give voice to it. Acting, ha, oh, okay, sorry. Let me read that verse of scripture to you. There are three of them, but just one. I, it's, it, will, it will solve my problem. Then we can pray. So we can stand. We can stand. Um, help me, Jesus. That's um, Romans chapter 16, verse 19. That's the only one I want. 16, 19. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf. This is what I need. But yet I will have you wise unto that which is good. A translation says be excellent. Be perfect at what is good. And simple concerning evil. You know what simplicity means? Innocence. Be ignorant of evil. Be excellent at what is good. But be innocent. It means live a life that has not participated in that strange tree. The tree of life is what captured our reality. And it was a journey from the good of, from one good of God to another good of God. The consciousness of failure was not in the tree of life. God knows that there is a concept called failure. Are you with me? Because when man was ejected, he said man is become like us, having the knowledge of good and evil. So God knows that there is delay. But the tree of life does not advertise it. So man was not supposed to know that it's possible to write an exam and fail. If he does not know it, he won't create it. Are you with me? Man was not supposed to know that it was possible for God to send you on an errand and you'll not be able to fulfill it. Man was not supposed to know lack. The mandate of man in the garden was to guard and to, sorry, to tend and to keep. That suggested that man was aware of intruders, but man was not aware if he had eaten of the tree of life that you can be overcome. So he will never have said, don't let them have power over me. He will have said, I'm above always. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. That is tree of life communication. I'm going to build around the wholesome tongue when I come. Because the Bible says the tongue that does not err, that's the wholesome tongue, is as a tree of life. That's how it functions. Always life-giving. Always life-giving. So as you are going home, I know there's no food in the house. If somebody looks like the person has food, 
don't say I don't have food just simply tell the person I'm meeting in your house this night are you with me are you on me we need to train ourselves that way if we're not on air okay so go off air one minute totally one minute Somebody is saying, is Apostle deviating? These teachings are not core apostolic teachings. Are you with me? But, are we still offline? I do not tell.
So she came from like 120, got to 80. And as we moved into here, the next thing was bow, front bumper down. We saw that our car had taken a man into the air. Drunk, notwithstanding, we hit him. Came back crashing, his back crossed our whole windshield and he landed with a thought. It was on my side. Bow, that was the sound. And then blood all over the road. His eyes became dilated. And the only word that came out of my mouth was, leave. And then we sat down. They rushed us. They were trying to get into the car. And I had to whisper to the policeman. I said, they are both military men. So they gave us space. Took the guy to a specialist hospital. They told us to buy this, buy that. The doctor would look at me, eye me. Do his work, eye me. They were walking through the man. By the time we took that man with probably broken skull because of the blood and the sound on tarmac from that height up. When he sat in the car, immediately he sat at the owner's corner. That's where I was. He said, I'm sorry. What? It was not incomprehensible speech. He spoke like he had no injury. The only word was leave. It was word seasoned with grace seasoned with salt the word stayed i'm sorry i'm sorry his brother was begging us that he, he, he drank plenty yesterday night now he's going to church this morning that's why i ran to the road after a while the doctor said are you that guy that preaches on youtube i said yes he said no wonder why did he say no wonder because at that height the slot bumper broken glass no piece of broken bone Nothing. He only had a little cut here that they stitched and got down from the table and went home himself. We will have been murderers. As the father had life in himself. So he has given to the son to have life. And the, the mandate is that the son gives to whosoever he wishes. He wishes. <coughs> so life was a release such as we have have and let that life stay it 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 will rework bones it will close up fractures it will it will it will repair organs it's not apostolic it is the believer's reality yes, so can we use one week let's see if it works me, I know it works. But let's see if it works. That on every situation, you will speak the language of God. If you are willing, can you receive his help? Can you receive his help? Ask him. Ask him. His help. His help. His help. He will teach you to be quiet. Until he has spoken to you. And when he speaks, you will make bold his witness. This week we frame our words by faith. We speak only the language of faith. We speak only the language of faith. We bring God's witness to bear over everything. He framed by his language. He upholds by language. He dominates by language. And we do same this week. There is none weak amongst us. This is the company of the strong. We are abundant unto every good work. That's his will. We are above only and not beneath. Every mountain is a call to ascend. Every project is a call to be enlarged. We always win. We always win. We always win. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Our bodies are healed. Our mind is at rest. 
Our stores is abundant. The kingdom thrives in our hands. We are taking nations. We are taking territories. Yes. We are redefining faith in God. We walk holy. We are blameless before Him. Yes. That's who we are. And we establish our existence speaking the language of God. Shake it, don't break it, brother. Bakelasa, a 